Now, when you talk about religion, how you define what you're talking about is really, really important. One of the things you're supposed to notice when you read the story of Jesus is that the people who persecuted him most intensely and disliked him most completely were the religious order of the day, leaving aside the argument of whether they were Jewish or not. The one thing you are supposed to notice for sure, and the Bible underscores, is that they were the religious people of their day. And they were thoroughly and completely schooled in dogmatic religion, and they practiced it to a T, dotted every I, crossed every T. So you would think they'd see the fulfillment of their scriptures and they go, hallelujah, but they didn't. They resented him and they persecuted him. Why? Well, because of what he represented. The first thing he represented was freedom. Religious people are opposed to freedom. When you, the anti-theist, talk about the, the, the negative aspects of religion, I am with you on a lot of the same pages. Christianity is not pro-religion in any meaningful sense of the word. Yes, Christianity has built religions over the, over the centuries. But the first thing you're supposed to notice in Jesus' struggles, his struggle is against the religious order of the day. Those are the people who hate him the most. The average sinner, the average, like, you know, today's world, it would be the punk rocker or the stoner or the whatever. They all liked him. Whatever, the lesbian, who knows? They all liked him. They were all cool with them, and he was cool with them. The freedom that he represented was appealing to them. Yes, it was freedom married with righteousness, the only type of freedom that makes any sense in this world. There's one thing that we as a culture learned from the 60s. As much as I was on the side of freedom, as much as I am, in theory, on the side of freedom, I have seen with my own eyes that freedom without direction, freedom without discipline, freedom for its own sake actually can produce ruin. The famous line from the song, freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. It's a famous line. Me and my Bobby McGee, famous song from the 60s, kind of sums up the whole thing. Freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. Nothing. Is that what freedom ultimately is? That's, that's the fake type of freedom that appeared in the culture in the 60s. Now, there was liberation in it. If you grew up in the 50s, you grew up in a society that was a lot more conformist than the society that we're used to nowadays. Everyone got the same haircut. Everyone wore the same outfit. The man in the gray flannel suit was an actual person that existed in the 50s. You, you conformed to the society around you at large. And you didn't question. So some of the upending of that rigid moral structure or that rigid societal structure, some of the upending of that was, was valuable and awesome and liberating. And there was a hallelujah moment to be had in the 60s for sure. My mom herself will tell you the difference. 1956, nobody went to the supermarket unless they were dressed up. <laughs> they were dressed up like they were going to church. This is God's honest truth. 1956, nobody went to the supermarket in just jeans and a t-shirt. 1976, totally different world. You know, people didn't think in nowadays you see like, you know, Mark Zucker wearing a, a hoodie to a freaking business meeting. Nobody thinks anything about it. That would, he would have been like an alien life form in 1957. People would have been like, what on earth is that? It's still a little weird, sure, fine. It's still a little weird, fine. Weird became kind of okay. That's the point. Some of it was good. We relaxed our societal standards a little bit so that if you were the outsider, you were the weirdo, you feel, you feel a little more at peace, you feel a little bit more safe, at comfort, at ease in the world today because it's more expansive in its vision as to what is kosher and what is not. But there was a price. There was a price. And that price cannot be denied. Now that price need not exist as long as you understand that freedom is a double-edged sword. Just like the song says, freedom in some instances is just another word for nothing left to lose. 
You throw out your house, your car, and your wife, and you go roaming the streets as a vagabond, and you walk across the country. Yeah, you're free, but you got nothing left to lose. That's not necessarily liberating freedom. Amazingly, this is the lesson of the wilderness. This is the lesson in the Bible. It's the same lesson. Go read. In the Old Testament, they wander around looking for the promised land. They have their first taste of freedom. And they make the same mistake. The same mistake as we made as a culture at large. Oh, cool, freedom. That means party. Oh, cool, freedom. Most people misinterpret freedom as valuable as freedom is. Most people misinterpret its, its agenda because they experience it only in accordance with their desires and their carnal desires. In other words, freedom means cool, let's party. Freedom means let's drink. Freedom means let's, let's, there are no more restrictions on our behavior. Let's go have as much fun as humanly possible for as long as humanly possible. Now, I experienced that type of freedom in my own life because I grew up in the America that we have become. And there was very, very few limits on my behavior in any meaningful sense of the word. I would come home at three in the morning drunk on a Friday night. I experienced that freedom firsthand as an adult in my 20s. And it's a double-edged sword. There is a, t there is a time in that freedom where it starts to become harrowing. Where you look at the saucer and you say, cool, there are no limits on my behavior. And then the saucer starts to look back at you and you go, oh, God, there are no limits on my behavior. There are no limits on my behavior. And it starts to become the voice of despair inside of you. And you go, somebody help me. Somebody freaking help me. Why? Because there are no limits on my behavior. And I don't know how to govern myself. So that's all on that for now. Just, just something to think about. Freedom is a double-edged sword. What you do with the freedom is of the utmost importance. Freedom in and of itself is not necessarily all that. As liberating as it is, the intoxicating first whiff of freedom, as liberating as that can be, it is not necessarily the whole ballgame. There are other things you need. It's not the only thing that matters. Amen.